Uh, Justin, take us through your race day and how you got this win. It was tough. You know, when you were coming into the day throughout the year, the top field field was going to be really tough. Uh, you know, you saw it starting today where races were separated by such little margins. And, you know, we really had no layups at all. And you're really never going to have any layups. And to be able to beat a guy like Jim Maroney, Andron Brown, Steve Torrance, of course, the four-time champion, and, uh, and Austin Brock was doing a great job, really just solidified what we came out here and wanted to do. We spent the offseason trying to work on power, pick up, pick up, pick up, and, and you know, and get to where we want to get to. And I feel like today is really, you know, you can see that. All right, we're going to open it up to members from the media. Josh Hackett, Bobby Bennett. Bobby Bennett, thecompetitionplus.com. Uh, Justin, uh, one of the things that your team worked on was getting after the run early in the incrementals from 60 foot to 8th mile, 330. Uh, how much did that play into your success today? It played a huge role, right? I mean, you know, you think back to testing it. We test for a reason. And we wanted to focus on our 60 foot times and our early numbers. And our early numbers in Phoenix were really good. And now it was up to us to make sure that they translate to Pomona and the rest of the year. We're off to a good start. That was integral in the way the car was running. And really, it was like a bracket car all day today. I mean, this Phillips Connect Toyota Top Fuel Dragster all day long up and down the racetrack. And from a driver's perspective, when it's moving early like that, when it's going down the racetrack, there is... Uh, very few things that, that give you as much confidence as that does. As, as a follow-up, uh, getting getting those uh, strong early times, does that force you as a driver to be brutally and consistent in every aspect? I mean, driving straighter than you've ever driven and stuff like that. Sure it does. I mean, I think that the better the car is running, of course, you feel a little bit more pressure to perform for your team. But for me, there's really no difference. There's always pressure to perform for your team. and. There's really no more pressure from the outside than there is that I'm going to put pressure on myself because our Davis Motorsports team and Mike Green, they do such an outstanding job. And it's up to me to just try and be the best driver that I can be. And a big part of that is doing the same thing every time, whether it's staged at the same time, the same way, whether it's keep the car as straight as possible. It's all about doing the same thing every time. And uh, really, it's just a, uh, a lot of fun to be able to drive this race car. Justin, you had a, a great countdown last year, great way to, to finish the year and, and to pick up like this you know to, to improve even more you know 60s throughout this weekend and then get a win what, what does that say about just kind of the direction of this team kind of picking up where you guys left off last year well yeah i mean it says we uh we were very proactive in the off season which we were we knew that the top field field was going to be stacked and we really didn't want to stay stagnant because that was not going to be good for us we wanted to make sure we picked up and I think really what it says is it's just a testament to our team. They spent all winter in the shop getting ready to go, preparing for days like today. So to be able to see it come to fruition so quickly for this team just means so much to us. It means so much to our sponsors, Chip Loft and Invited Seat Shot. We've been uh, communicating all day, and I'm just, just happy to win for him. Not, not, not to harp on last year with the, with the Winter Nationals, but obviously we know what, what happened. And to, to come back like this and, and, and win and, and – get a victory here what, what's the significance of that for you how meaningful is that yeah i mean it's special right but to be honest with you um i think it's more of a story than anything else for me that's just history it right. really makes no difference i'm going to be motivated no matter what so that really played no role in it i was motivated because i wanted to win a race and i wanted a race for our sponsors and our team and everybody who's out here from phillips connect this weekend so um yeah sure it's a little bit uh sweet i'm not gonna lie it feels kind of good same lane and everything but um you know a win is a win no matter where they come and how they come Bill Burgess, the National Dragster. Um, I've heard you say a couple of times already that this is the best top fuel field in a decade, in your opinion. What, what, what's the, the difference for you and what are going to be the challenges that that presents? Well, I think that obviously we have a few drivers that came back. The top fuel field's always been tough, but to have a guy like Josh Hart who's coming back full time, to have Austin Prop, to have Tony Schumacher, and guys out there that are no slouchers that are part time guys, guys like Doug Foley, Jim Maroney, Krista Baldwin when she gets out here, and so many others. They can win at any given time, and they have won before in the past. So that's what makes the starting line even that much more important. You know, these nitro cars are supposed to be unpredictable. These races aren't supposed to be that close, but for whatever reason, they are. And, um, you know, what it means for me is just I always have to be on my A game. There's no room to let up. There's no room to let a round slip by. So I think we know that as a team. And, and uh, to be able to come out strong and leave here with the points, Lee, feels pretty good. Lee Craft for the Competition Plus Power Hour, the Monday Morning Racer. <laughs> Justin, 
you won individually, but with what the racing we just saw today across Nitro, in particular top fuel racing, do you feel that it was a win for the sport that you also collected? I do. I do. I think it was a win for the sport. You know, winning is great, but when we can put on a good show for the fans, it's even better. It started with us in qualifying. Uh, Mike Salinas and our team both went 367, which was great for the fans. And all the close racing today was really a win in and of itself. I was really happy to see the attendance here this weekend, especially yesterday and especially today. And You know, the NHRA community is very, very strong, and uh, it really is a family. And it's just nice to see all the fans engaged, excited, happy to see us racing in the finals. I think all together this event was really a win for NHRA. Justin, I, saw, I watched you several times during the over the course of the weekend in your dad's ear all weekend. It seemed like you were asking for advice. Your dad being a two-time world champion and a uh, U.S. Nationals funny car champion. What kind of advice did you get from him this weekend? Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you, Bobby. Um, I wasn't too pleased with my reaction times going into Sunday. Uh, and it was something that was important. It, it was only important because I wanted to make sure that we gave our team the best opportunity to win. That's it. So we were just picking at it. You know, I didn't want to stay still and, and not make any changes. I didn't think that was a good idea. So we adjusted some things in the car. Uh, we adjusted some of my pre-race routine, and I think it paid off, and you see that here today. So that was a big part of it. And, uh, you know, he's obviously always there to support me and keep me level-headed because this sport's an emotional roller coaster, and you do not want to ride that emotional roller coaster because it's not going to be good for you. It's not going to be good for your team. So to have him and have his advice really helps me stay calm and level-headed. Justin, a couple of final thoughts. You had mentioned a couple of things out there on the stage with Alan Reinhardt I want to follow up on. First of all, great celebration. How long do you wait before you hit Epler up for a couple more races? <laughs> I don't know about that, man. I, uh, I got to focus on work. I got to get back to my work tomorrow, but uh, I'll have to speak to Jim, man. I'm just, I'm, I'll tell you what, though, I really am grateful for the opportunity, and uh, I don't know, maybe you want to speak to Jim a little bit. All right, just so you know, I already talked to him, and I know the answer to this question. But 30 years, the, the, the book ending his career with a win. You beat Antron Brown, Steve Torrance, and Austin Brock in a row. Those drivers are all known as levers. Reaction time so important. How is it different now that the driver's reaction time ability is maybe the most important thing? Of course, you got to go down the racetrack. you got to go fast. But you don't get around Antron, Steve and Austin and out there you said it might get chippy this year where did that come from why do you think that well I think that because the races are so close and a lot of times when the races are decided by reaction time like you said it's hard for a driver to take that emotion out of it because when these things happen the drivers are so emotionally invested that when they feel like all right you know we lost this race or we won this race because of me either way you're really going to see those emotions pour out and I think that reaction times are just so so important right now but so is the way the car runs, and everybody just out here is doing a phenomenal job, and I think that um, we'll see if it gets chippy. It's still a little early on in the season, but at the very least, I know that I'm assuming to get into the countdown, and when we get down to the championship, it's going to come down to making the countdown at Indy and then winning the championship, the final race at Pomona. Is there anything we haven't addressed that you want to say, you want to put out there in the world to the NHRA audience, to the fans, that we didn't happen to get to here in the media center? Probably just a thank you. You know, I know you guys uh, all work hard, so thank you to all the media out here. I think it's time you guys uh, get a little bit of credit, right? You guys deserve a lot of credit, so thank you for everything that you guys are doing. And, you know, a big shout out to the fans, right? Like I said, you know, the fans are what keeps the sport going. That's what NHRA is built on, and they packed the house today. And uh, I love to see it. We need some more of that throughout the rest of the season. And I just want to thank Chip Lofton and Vita Seashot for all of his support. He took a chance on us from day one. Rob Phillips and everybody at Phillips Connect, Kato, Auto Shocker Team, Toyota, Lucas Oil, Impact. The list goes on and on. Just uh, grateful for them and happy to be here. Thank you, Justin. Your top fuel winner, Lucas Oil Winter Nationals, presented by protecttheharvest.com. Thank you.